Hi, this is Riddick, Big Daddy Bo, two-time former world heavyweight champion, and you're watching Cool True Sports. <laughs> True School Sports. True School Sports. There you go, champ. Thank you. Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I'm gonna start to do a little bit more of this where, you know, when I when I when I watch boxing in my free time, I'm just gonna talk about old fights and give my little thoughts on it. And you guys can, uh, I would advise you guys any any fights that I, any classic fights that I make videos about, I would advise that you go watch all of them because every classic fight that I watch is is quite interesting you know but um yeah recently like maybe like four or five days ago um I spent about two or three hours with my dad and we just watched like four or five fights binge watching boxing so uh one of the fights that we watched was a fight that I've heard a lot about and you guys know I'm, I'm like a big Riddick Bowe fan Riddick Bowe's a uh, you know a big part of this channel's history uh my favorite heavyweight of all time is Riddick Bo. I made, I made no secrets about that. I love his skills as a big man at six foot five. Nobody had the inside skills of Riddick Bo, and that's the facts. But one fight that I've always heard about of his that I never ha got around to watch was his fight earlier in his career, back in like April of uh, 91. April of 91, he took on uh, none other than Tony Tubbs. You know, Tony Tubbs, the former, you know, WBA heavyweight champion. Or no, not w WBA, it was WBA? I think it was, yeah, WBA, he, when he beat uh, Greg Page. He beat Greg Page, became WBA heavyweight champion. For those that don't know, Tony Tony Tubbs was like a really, really good boxer. Uh, undisciplined, fluctuated in weight a lot. So like he won the title against Greg Page, lost the next fight against Tim Witherspoon. But he was one of those guys that when he was good and ready and he came in shape, he could really go in there and box you, box you up. You know, really good fighter, Tony Tubbs. Had this, like, looseness about him to where, like, you know, he had almost seemed like he was too loose in there. Like, he was too cool for school. Like, man, Tony Tubbs was, was when Tony Tubbs was, was, was on his game, when he was on his A game, Tony Tubbs could box his ass off. And he was, it was just fun to watch. But anyway, I watched this fight against Riddick Bo because he I'd heard a lot about it. I've heard, people, I've heard some people say that Riddick Bo lost to Tony Tubbs. No. Riddick Bo at this point in time had 22 fights. He was 23-0 uh, going in. This was like, what, seven? We're talking about about 19 months before, about a year and a half before he fought Holyfield because he fought Holyfield in November, in November of 92. This is April of, of uh, 91. So Riddick Bo was still very much in development. He was still learning. You know, um, Tony Tubbs was like three years removed from getting knocked out by Mike Tyson in two rounds. Uh, Mike Tyson and his he fought he fought the prime Mike Tyson and prime Mike Tyson folded him up beat the living shit out of him in front of everybody at the Tokyo Dome in Japan it was it was absolute pandemonium if you if you never, never watched that fight go watch that one as well but um in that fight like Tony Tubbs even even in defeat he went out on his shield and, and he was there he was there to rumble with Mike Tyson even though people said that wasn't a good idea he he he, he had he had that dog about him but anyway so wait, let's get to the fight so. When I watch this fight, and I've watched, I've watched a lot of Rick Bo fights. Like I've watched fights of his as a prospect. Like I've, I've watched him against Burt Cooper, and I've watched him against Everett, uh, Bigfoot Martin. But this fight with Tony Tubbs was was a bit different because he had a guy in there that was um, an elite when when in shape, an elite slick boxer, a guy that um, is hard to hit, hard to time, can hit you from different angles. Um, can can get you to fight at his pace, and if you don't have um, things in your skill set to offset his rhythm, because Tony Tubbs is the definition of a rhythmic fighter. He's like one of the most rhythmic fighters there is, meaning that you know some fighters like rhythm. Rhythm is everything in boxing, but rhythm means more for some fighters than others. So like guys that rely on boxing skills who don't have elite power. Um, they're more they're more rhythmic than other than fighters who have you know elite power. Um, Tony Tubbs in this fight was all the way in his bag. I mean, I I, I watched this fight and to my surprise and to my surprise, I, I actually think Riddick Bo lost this fight, and I thought he lost it pretty wide. I thought I thought Tony Tubbs put on a boxing clinic on Riddick Bo. 
Like, I'm talking like they fought 10 rounds. I thought Tony Tubbs won seven of the 10 rounds. Six at the worst, but he won the fight. Like, he beat Riddick Bo. Riddick Bo in this fight actually looked a lot robotic. He looked very mechanical. He looked very robotic. He was, even though the, he was like a year and a half away from the from the Evander Holyfield, the first Evander Holyfield fight where he put it all together and became heavyweight champion of the world, undisputed, he looked such a far cry from that in this fight uh, with Tony Tubbs. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that Tony Tubbs was very loose in round one. Tony Tubbs was doing a good job of offsetting Bo. He was doing a good job of um, really neutralizing Bo's jab. Neutralizing Bo's jab with his jab, with the up jab, with the straight jab, with the right hand. You know, uh, to one, one thing also that's really good about Tony Tubbs is he's very good at moving from... So, some fighters are more comfortable moving one, one, one way than the other, other. But the thing about Tony Tubbs is he's very loose. He's got a good jab. He's got good feints. But he's able to move to his right and his left. He's able to move to his left as he as he is to his right. He, he moves to both sides equally well. So that makes it that makes it very hard for a fighter to cut the ring off on him because if a guy can move to the left and to the right and he's still equally as fluid and fast, then he's hard to time as so far as cutting the ring off is concerned. So in this fight, you know, you saw Riddick Bowe throwing the jab a lot, but then you saw Tony Tubbs really slick, making a miss, parrying, slipping, dipping, just doing all kinds of really good things. And I feel really bad for Tony Tubbs. And like, it go, it's crazy to even say like, even back in the nineties, like sometimes as boxing fans, we like to romanticize history and say, oh, well, back in the days, it wasn't like this. When in all reality, the A-side guys were getting preferential treatment all the way back in the early nineties. Riddick Bowe did not beat Tony Tubbs. Tony Tubbs was an inconsistent ass fighter. I mean, if you look at his weight, like just look at the weight that he fought at his last three fights before the Riddick Bowe fight. He fought at 245 pounds against Mike Cohen, 233 pounds against Orlando Norris, 244 pounds against Lawrence Carter, and then when he fought Bowe, he was 234 and a quarter pounds. So constant fluctuations in weight was a theme of his career. He was kind of like, you know, in my opinion, he kind of reminds me of like the heavyweight version of Tony Harrison to, to, to make a, a comparison to a modern day fighter. Like he's a guy that on his night when he's prepared can beat, can beat top guys in the division. He's one of the most skilled guys in the division as far as his pure boxing skills, but lack of discipline, lack of, uh, and not to say that Tony Harrison does not discipline, but like Tony Harrison has lack of something, but it's not discipline. But like he had lack of discipline. Tony Harrison has lack of stamina. But like these, the, he's the same in the sense that he had some of the best pure boxing skills in this weight class, and if he had a little bit more quality in certain areas, he would he would have been one of the best heavyweights of his era. But due to lack of discipline, um, very inconsistent fighter. But this was one of his best performances. This is one of his finest hours, Tony Tubbs. Um, and you know, from the Bo side of things, it's a fight I thought he lost. But I, I think a fight like this. Is what old, like fights like this against Tony Tufts is what got him ready for Holyfield because, you know, when when you when you have a slick heavyweight like that, who can box, who can move, who can faint, who can slip, who can punch, who's got a good jab, who's got a good up jab, who's got a good right hand, who's got a, who's got a respectable left hook, he's a, just a very well balanced heavyweight all the way around the board. You know, it, I I think a fight like that made it very um, it prepared him for Holyfield because Holyfield, as great as he was, and he was damn great. His style was just a little bit better for him than a guy like Tony Tubbs. Tony Tubbs, in in shape and prepared, gives most heavyweights hell. I mean, absolute hell. Even Mike Tyson, like, if you go back and you watch the Mike Tyson fight, like, Tony Tubbs got knocked out on two rounds, but, man, he was in there. He was – if Mike Tyson didn't get him, get him out of there in round two, I think it would have – it could have turned it, – it, it's one of those fights to where if the fight would have won some rounds, you could kind of see, like – it would have really turned into a, a difficult night at the office for Mike Tyson. But Mike Tyson showed his quality and why he was great on that night. And he allowed it to go that far. But anyway, this is about Bo and Tony Tubbs. Tony Tubbs, I thought, was unjustly robbed in this fight. I thought Tony Tubbs should have got the decision. I thought Tony Tubbs um, really just offset Riddick Bowen and it was in his bag. I mean, it really was entertaining to watch. Um, and that's what it was. That's what it was. So, uh, yeah, on that note... You guys can let me know what you guys think. You know, uh, after this fight, Riddick Bo was talking about, you know, uh, Rock Newman was very adamant about the Holyfield fight because he felt like Holyfield wasn't the hardest guy to hit in the world. 
Um, and you know, Foreman had fought Holyfield and Foreman was slow. So the Foreman fight gave the Bo camp a lot of confidence going into the, um, you know, the Holyfield fight 19 months later on. And that's what it was. Uh, Riddick Bo did say he wouldn't have minded, minded a rematch. Tony Tubb, he said that they could have did it in like, you know, later on down the line. But that's what it was. You know, he, he felt like he won. He felt like uh, that's what it was, you know. Um, Eddie Fudge did say that Tony Tubbs was the craftiest fighter Riddick Bowes fought to date. So that shows you the respect that Tony Tubbs earned on the night. He, he boxed his ass off. A lot of the judges, a, a lot of the people that have watched this fight have, have had Tony Tubbs win of the fight. So I would like you guys to uh, let me know what you think. What, what, what did you guys think about the fight? Uh, who, who did you have win in the fight, Bo or Tony Tubbs? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, that's my thoughts on the fight. Take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from doing it. So until next time, take care. Uh, just like uh, uh, Mayweather's uncles would say, a lot of people don't know shit about boxing. Um, you know, um, you you do. You've done Thank it. Thank you. You about the only smart guy that I know, bro. Nobody knows shit about boxing. I appreciate it, man. I'm gonna say, man, make sure to follow True School Sports, always covering boxing at the highest level, man, and make sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel. Follow him on Instagram at Just a Kid from Danny as well. Ooh, he, he the plug.